So uh, I believe everybody can see my screen. Yeah. So no problem. So this is the one we were working on uh, the other day. Actually, this is the you know uh, AG training uh, component that we are working on, right? So let's uh, go ahead and get in there, basically. And uh, let's just bring this down here. So I'll make it 100%. And uh, what we will do is uh, we had the issue the other day, you know. So um, the only thing is I'll finish up, we can finish up presenter reports, you know, uh, the web, uh, workflow manager, I don't, I'm not really sure whether I can finish that or not, but the web forms we have to uh, do another session actually, because I'm planning to download, uh, like I'm planning to get a web form uh, from somewhere, the code and all, so once I get it, uh, I'll be able to kind of uh, go over with that, okay. so. So this is the data store that we are working on and then like this is the uh, report all payouts. Remember we are working on this report. So if you go ahead and right click on this. So this is the report. Remember? So this is the text in the report. This is the layout. The layout is a table. It will be like 2 by 4 or 3, whatever you define basically. That's the table. So you can do a right click, edit font, and you can change the font to whatever like a convenient for you. So you can do that. So all payout, for example. So it's going to be like that. Basically, so the other day I was explaining, you know. So um, the other day I was explaining like uh, when we pick a particular person or like a month or something it should display, right? So I was able to kind of uh, fix that problem. I will show you that um, problem actually. I'll tell you how it works. Okay, so um, so basically, this is a data grid, right? As we discussed before, this is a data grid, and data grid displays uh, different uh, like unlimited number of rows and certain it has certain set of columns. Okay, uh, so uh, what happens is if you want to uh, picking, if you want to pick from a uh, like uh, if you want to pick from a uh, uh, from a certain list of days, for example, if you have this DS union all payouts, right? So let's say if you have this DS union all payouts, DS union all payouts. So this is the one. If you go ahead and right click, so if you do a current values on this, it will show like different different values here. Okay, so it will show like uh, it will show for different uh, payees basically. So we have like one payee, uh, for example, let's take this payee. So this payee will have some values for like nine, uh, ten different months or so, nine different months or something like that. So what we want to do is we want to display uh, like uh, when we pick a particular payee, we have to display only that results. That's the thing. So when we pick a particular payee, it has to display only that result. Okay, so what I did was, okay, so what I did was I created something called DSPE. So I created something called DSPE. DSPE is like a data store. So right click, add data store, and then that's how we did that before. So uh, this is the data store that I uh, created. Right click, it is data store, and I just got it from a table basically. I just got it from the a table. I just added a table as a uh, like as a table as source basically. Okay, and then go next and select columns, and I'm going to select only the pay ID and the pay name, no restrictions name in columns and if you do our new current values it will show the pay ID and the name means like uh, sometimes we put email address but however the name should be the name so whatever the name of this particular pay it will be here so we created a data store just from the pay table and we are getting output of only two columns pay ID and name okay so that is for DSP. So when we go back to present the report, what I did was I need to create a parameter. 
So when I say a parameter, a parameter is like it can be passed from one report to another, or it can be like something that user inputs, or it can be a default value. So if you come here, so this is the user input. This is the user input. Something that user entered here. Okay. So or we sometimes we can put like default value also. So for for now for our purpose, I put EFAE and I put it's a text format and user entered. So user will pick a list from the user will pick a list from the drop down. User will pick a list from the drop down. So how the drop down appears, I'll show you. So this parameter is like is like passing something. Parameter is passing it will get, uh, like you know the user input basically. So now how we got that page list list of pages. So I have created a source here which says so page pick list. Then I selected DSP. Select sources, DSP, AID name, no restrictions, naming columns, new current values. It will display the same thing very much. Okay. And now, after that, what I did, I created a uh, pick list control. Pick list control that which will actually display the drop down that we are talking here. So that is the pick list control basically. If you go back here. If you go back here and then right click edit pick list control. So I just put some name a e pick list and I pick the source which we created. SOP e pick list and I created uh, like I got the description name. Okay, name is the one which will actually display this uh, salmonella all those things is the name that is going to display and this is the ID column this is the name we have an option to hide ID column we can hide that actually. and but we will be picking the name and it will fit TAPE okay we will be picking a name it will fit TAPE so the ID will actually the pick list, the ID will join with the AE that we picked. So I'll show you how we did the join. So first of all, you need to understand that this is a parameter, user entered parameter. Then we created a source which will have the pay ID and pay name. Then we created a pick list, SOP, and then there is some description we are picking the name. It will fill this parameter. Ascending. Okay. So now how we restrict the data that is being displayed. So we pick the pay. So we need to restrict the data that is being displayed in the data grid. So you go to the data grid, select sources, add parameter PA, pay. Okay, add parameter PA, pay. Okay, and then select columns. And here we put PA pay equal to whatever the pay that we pick equal to the equal to the this particular source equal to this source. So whatever pay that the user picked only if it is that one then it will display the data. Okay, that is done. So now we can save this. So let's go back to the report. So this is the next slide. Okay. So now this is the all payouts report. So if I pick, for example, the first page, it's better to display the ID column actually. Otherwise, it will be very difficult. Okay, that is fine. Show on the layer. So display SP1003. So show on the layer. Or, uh, this belongs to this PEI. So we can verify that in the PEI table. And right here. Okay. 
So Shonda Lev is uh, what's the have a library? Yeah, pay ID is ESP one two two zero three. So this is Shonda Lev. So that's how we kind of restrict the data. So that's how we restrict the data basically. Okay, so that is how we kind of uh, like how we uh, get the data from the data store. And we restrict the data that is being displayed on the database. Everybody got an idea on that? So that is the presenter report that I was talking about. You guys got an idea? So pretty much, uh, you know, that that is the presenter report. So, however, we have like different different things we can try. Uh, we tried uh, like a conditional formatting, and uh, I believe we did the pixel grid also, right? This is fine. Anchor, new anchor. Yeah, this is fine. Okay, so this is the pixel grid. Yeah, this one we already tried this. I'll show that. Like, how do we? Create fixed grid. How do we create charts and stuff like that? And I, I pretty much explained that already. Okay. So, um, like everybody clear on that basically. And we can also create like uh, values. Addition. Oh yes, yes. Uh, Addition. Can you tell me once uh, how this uh, parameter the uh, PM and PAP? Uh, what is the parameter? What? Uh, how we have how we created this uh, PA uh, parameters PA month and PA pay. Yeah, so you right click and then add parameter and then you put in a value PA pay and then you create text and user entered. Okay, so that's what it is. Or you can put a value uh, like you know I'm uh, not the value so. Default value will show something like that, but however, user entered, and then you can put default value here. Like you can put 2013, like uh, oh, not 2013. You can put SP1003, something like that. So that's how we created this parameter. Yeah, so that is how we created the parameter, and I'm also talking about uh, showing some values also. So there is some stored value we can take a uh, like uh, let's put table display so we can take a value and actually we can display that on the we can display that on the uh, basically uh, on the web so that's what I was trying to say transaction date select Okay, let me just check this. Enter. Amount. Okay, for this one we need another setup actually. So choose the value column and the ID. So this amount, these guys, value column is amount and ID column is select. Uh, let me check. Let user. And you type okay. So we are going to select the user. Okay. Now uh, let's try this. Uh, sometimes the selected value is uh, so we can add something like fixed grid. We can test that value. Okay. So where is the table display? I'm going to put it like this. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it's a number. Decimal places. Yeah. Sure. So let's try this. So it has to match something, so otherwise it won't display basically. So we can get the data and get it to display on the web. Data means from a PSD geography. So that table shouldn't be empty at all. So we can check that table. So sometimes, uh, so basically what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get a value from the data from this particular uh, table 
and trying to display it. However, I put a condition here. If we go back here, I put a condition saying that okay, source is condition. Whenever a web user, so when I say the current web user, like whoever logs on to the web client with their pay ID, you see this uh, SP1002 or whatever for this uh, IRA dot memory. So that is the current web user. So that's what it is. Whenever the current web user equal to uh, like uh, you know the value uh, subscriber in the ID, uh, it display the. So basically what I what I am saying is the current web user SP1002. If it is in the table TST geography, in the subscriber column, get the amount value and display. That's what I'm trying to do. Here. However, if you go to TST geography, it's not even there. One 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 two two two. It won't work. So let us check something else, some other table. Let's see if we can display anything. Let's see a table. So let's display something name. Let us try this. Sometimes it will work. Sometimes. It Yeah, so let's see. Hmm. So, what am I doing? So maybe. Let me check. Sometimes the current web user it might not even uh, AID equal to what is that? EAP for example. Uh, yes, let's do EAP. Let us try that and then submit and then see if it works. Let's go up. Oh, I'm looking at the different report now. That's why I'm getting confused. One second. Let me check Shonda lead again. See, display displaying the value for Shonda lead here. So, so let's let's put that uh, ID column back again. I'll tell you what it is. So basically what that uh, you know like stored value does is if I pick like uh, you know uh, for example uh, this hanger whatever teriyaki very wide exactly so it will display this value will go to the pay table it will take this ID it will go to the pay table and it will get the value and display it here that's what it was doing in the fixed build basically. So that is how we used stored values. However, we can do one more value also. Let's try one more value. Uh, for example, I'm just doing some test. Uh, that's it. I mean, it's not like you know. I'll put test stored. Okay. Uh, one. So I'll put some one. Basically, I'm just trying to display a value of one here. I'll drag this and drop it here. I'll say disables. That is fine. Click OK. Click Save. Now, even if I select something, show the layer. The value shown earlier and then one automatically appears. So basically, it is a calculated value. However, 
So we can do a calculated value also. So okay, whether the value makes uh, stored, it should be calculated value. Um, Okay, no problem. So basically what it is saying is it cannot do anything again. We change the name so it's scripting above that. So that's fine. See now it's displaying the value. So automatically it will display because we don't have any restrictions. See? Broccoli it is displaying the value of 4. So that is how we use the uh, like uh, constant value. So we can put a constant also. Constant means just put a value there and then it will display there. So these are the how, this is how we use the values. Okay. And uh, for example, we can do okay. sometimes we can use current data also. I'm just trying to see if we can use current date. I thought I used it before. Uh, we cannot put spaces there, so that's the problem. Yeah. So let's put date here. Drag. Oh, we already have current date here. That's what I said. So if you drag and drop current date, okay, it will display that here. So I will click OK. Click OK for the fixed grid. Click save. See, it is showing the current day already. So it is showing the current day. So this is going to show the current day answer. So that's how we can use the values and parameters. Okay, so far any questions on that? So you guys understand? Uh, uh, Krishna, one question. Like, uh, if I want to align these things, uh, how will you do it again? We have to go to conditional formatting and align. If I want this broccoli four and Wednesday in top of, along with, after all payouts, is that uh, possible? You, you want it after payouts here? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So if you want that, then what you need to do is you need to edit the layout table. Add more. So what you need to do is you need to touch list new and let's pick something. Yeah, now it's coming under it. Did you guys see? So that element we can do that actually. So the, the top one is the data grid, the bottom one is the fixed grid. So that's how we can do the alignment. Okay, okay. Okay. So that is uh, like pretty much we talked about values, we talked about parameters, we talked about uh, uh, you know we talked about uh, we talked about parameters, we talked about uh, Data grades, we talked about fixed grades. I believe I showed row form sources also for you in the geography report. Where is the geography report? Uh, the previous session was uh, 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 was very fast, so it's not in our mind. Maybe I need to go through the video again. Yeah, yeah, definitely you can go through the video.
and uh, if you can uh, like refresh or something, uh, so you can see the. I believe I sent videos for everything. So you know, it's pretty much I explained uh, all these things. I mean, pretty much the same thing. Pretty easy. Uh, you know, um, like uh, if you just go through once, you'll be able to understand. So I mean, what I'm saying is, yeah, row forms also we went through that one. The row forms is like uh, inputting data. Like if you input some data into the row form source, uh, that will reflect in the table. Okay. So we talked about conditional formatting also. For example, uh, you know, if this is the DS geography, right click, it is data grid. Right click, this one, and then this is the conditional formatting. So we right click, uh, select column, uh, format column conditional formatting and then we add a condition one to one edit and it will go to the right so just just that particular column will go to the right okay so like that I mean this one is also select column format column conditional formatting and we put this condition first so we put if this particular source, whatever data we are getting, if it is less than 200, display in green. So if it is less than 200, display in green. Okay. So, I mean like this, obviously, this minus, uh, this thing, it will be displayed in green because less than 200. So that's how we took care of that. Okay. Well, Krishna, well, yeah. 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 Krishna? Yes. Uh, Subhanesh here. Uh, so we aligned it to the right, the column header. Correct. So again, if I want to bring it to the uh, to the left hand side, how can I do that? Uh, so you assign, we assign this column to the right. Yeah. So we go to right click format column, condition formatting, this one, edit, and come here and click the align left. So when you click, okay. it will come to the okay. Right. So that is for any individual columns, okay, and and uh, that is for the uh, like individual column formatting. However, if you click on it, you know, for the header part, you need to click on this one. So if you click on this, header will come here. Did you guys see? Click on this, header will come there. So like that. So the row thing, the condition formatting, we are doing it to the right. So usually for numeric things they want it to the right, something like that. So for numeric condition formatting, they do that usually. Okay. So yeah, so that uh, like uh, I mean some of these uh, Krishna, uh, yeah. One more doubt, Ayan. Yes. Uh, Krishna, if, uh, we just got a uh, we just uh, saw about the calculated value. Correct. Okay. Uh, in the final uh, result, we get the payouts on the right hand side. So I want that all the payouts in the multiples of 2. Can I make that? Uh, so what, uh, this payouts, huh? Yeah, yeah, yes. Uh, we get the answer to the payouts on the right column. So I want that uh, payouts in the multiples of 2. If it is 100, I sh it should display as 200. Like that. Uh, if it is 100, it should display as 200. Yeah, there is something called, I believe I did something before, add a computed uh, this is the payout, okay, and complicated column. So I'll put payout multiple. Select column, uh, completed column formula. Oh, within the cell function, what is that? Okay, so sometimes this computed column will give a problem. Uh, the, the formula is invalid to that. It's only valid within a cell, okay. Maybe
Um, so that, yeah, because I completed thing, I actually like did work for me. So because this is the source payout, um, so let me see, there is one concept for completed column. Sometimes even I get stuck in add completed column. So I use the source folder, right click, add source, add transformation, so add completed column. Uh, okay, expand the sources folder. So we can do that, but uh, um, so that we can do. However, I know I know there is one way, but here uh, previously they, I mean like this is the one I actually see. This, they they used to do that. Uh, I can tell you there's a couple of other ways. Uh, Type the add completed row in the display right because this is what I did. Type the name for the column and click OK to get a formula. Double click on the computed column. Alright. So sometimes it will give error. This formula is not software is only valid within a cell function. Alright. So okay. um Okay, no problem. So what we will do is we'll do one more thing. Okay, so let's do one thing. I'll create another source. This is the source all payouts. Right click, add source, add transformation, add computed column. Okay, CC all payouts. Okay, we can do that actually, but uh, there is another way of doing that. However, it's not. It's not doing that, so that's fine. Okay, edit data grid. Instead of that, I don't want anything here. So, what are we doing here? Right click, select a column, everything is displaying. One second, set column bits, complaint. Okay, we are good. So, once I do this, I'll tell you. Yeah, so that is this one is a multiplication of two. If you see that, this is a multiplication of two. So basically, what it does is, so first, what we need to do is, we need to first one create the source. We need to right click on the source, add source, add transformation, add computer column, add it, put some name to it, something, and put the formula here, sum of whatever the payout is and then give a requirement, star 2, whatever star 2, star 3, something like that and then you finish this, that's what I did before and you have, so, so now this particular source that we just created will have all the columns from the source, okay, will have all the columns from the source have all the columns from the source as well as the new completed column as well as the new completed column that we added the new completed column is a column which is payout multiplied by 2 and that one we need to use as source to this data grid see previously we were using so all payouts now we are using cc all payouts so that is the thing basically okay and then you just make sure that it is all 100, okay, the width is all 100, and then it will display the, uh, like, uh, multiplication of this one, see, as you can see here, okay, so that is the thing that we can do, okay, and uh, what else, there is something that I want to say, okay, so if I want to display the total also, we can display, so let us try that. Um, yeah, you're welcome, but uh, I just wanted to see there is one more way to add source, add transformation, add IDK transformation, ADG. So 
So let us do that. Actually, you know what? I'll create on top of it. Add aggregated transformation. Um, So my navigation is not coming here, table display. Web user, um, please add a row, current date. Okay. I don't know why that is easy out there. It's so basically stable display. Okay. Okay. All these things. Add a section for. One second guys, I'm just trying to see something here. Okay, so hopefully I'm trying to uh, I'm trying something else, so I'll just let you know once it is uh done. another way to do that so I just wanted to kind of uh, you know once I create the aggregation payout there is a way to kind of uh, display the total on the bottom so it, it, it will total by PAID so I'm just trying that actually somehow it's uh, you know I, I partitioned by PAID I sorted it by you know maybe I'm just doing by months or something Let's try. It doesn't work. We can display add a new section for each page. Yeah, I think the page only. So I shall the page only. So that's very right. Let the end. Okay. Yeah. Somehow it's uh, it has to display a section. PAID it has to show the aggregate. Um, so I cannot show current date and table display date and limited. It's not showing anything here. So yeah, so somehow it's I mean like I wanted to show that. Um, uh, if I add this one here. Let me try something else. If it doesn't work, then I have to kind of look at it again. Um, so I'm just trying to see if uh, this particular aggregation that I created, it's uh, in available pay. Uh, so that if, yeah, if it is here, then I can just drag and drop it here. That's what I was just thinking. However, uh, it's not showing there. So, so there might be an issue here. Um, you know, when I do that, I did buy a payout. So it, it's supposed to show, show sections. 
that's what I was, uh, maybe the CCL payout is got messed it up or something. Okay, new section. Sometimes if I, if I don't know, so it's always better to refer to the guide. No. New section. So, yeah, so that is one thing uh, I just wanted to show that actually. However, the CCL payout should work fine, but however, the aggregation, what I want to show is actually what I'm trying to do is once I get all these things, I just want to put it at the bottom, say that this is the uh, total amount for this particular payout. So that's what I was just trying to see. However, uh, you know, um, it wasn't working for some reason. So maybe if I just delete that. Okay. Yeah, so if I delete that and if I select this, maybe I think if it, if it is doesn't then current it. Yeah, it's not showing the relevant sources even though um Oh, this one is gone, right? So that's what I'll do is I'll click this. Right click. Right click. Add source. Add transformation. Add aggregate transformation. What I will do is I'll add a constant Okay, so now did you guys see what happened? So now it is showing the total amount for this particular payout. Okay, so it is showing the total amount for this particular payout. So what I did was, first I created a constant value, which has just a constant add value, constant, total, I put total. So that is the constant value. We create that one first and we have the SO all payouts. We know this source already. We saw this. So this is pretty much the source we talked about this. And then on top of it, I create an aggregation. Right click, add source, add transformation, add aggregate transformation. Put something here. Go next. And then sum of payout sum of payout, okay, assume sum of payout, 
and then just partition by KAD. That's what I did. I created an aggregate transformation. Then what I did, went to the data store, sorry, uh, went to the data grid. It should be DG. I don't know why it is DG. I should put DG. Pick the source. Sort it by PEAD. So that is important. First we need to remember to create each section sum for the PEAD. We need to definitely have PEAD as a sort column. So it should sort by PEAD. PEAD. So that is there. And all the other columns that we discussed before. Column width should be 100. That's automatically it will be there. Next. And here we need to, you know, we need to add a section. We need to add a section. Okay. When I add a section, this thing will pop up. So I need to drag and drop this aggregate payouts here. I can adjust the uh, font here, like uh, the numeric format. And I need to drag and drop the total called constant. I just need to put it here. Then it will create a section for each page showing the aggregate of the for that particular uh, year, I would say. So here yeah, for 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 12, it will be showing the total aggregation. So that is the, so most of these reports, they want this kind of stuff. So that is very important concept, creating a section for each page. Okay, then I click finish, and that's one. So everybody got it? Any question on that? Uh, I got it, Krishna. Maybe I missed that part. The last one you dragged the aggregate all payouts, right? When we created it, we just created something called HH, right? HH. Uh, no, we created, uh, see, the process is we created a constant value called total. Okay. Then we went into source of so all payouts. Yes. And we created an aggregate function, correct? Yes, we created an aggregate function uh, like this, yes. Yeah, no. Okay, so we named it as some HH or something, and where this AGG all payouts came into picture, why we are dragging no, 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 that no, one? No, I am just showing uh, just like that. I mean, like I showed the process, I just put some HH, something like that, but this is the correct one, AGG all payouts. Okay, 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 sorry. The HH is nothing, I didn't even create it, I cancelled Oh, sorry. Yeah, so that's the thing. So, that's so initially we... we created as AG all payouts, and then we dragged it in the last one to have the results. Okay, got it. Okay. Correct. And we put the total so that everybody will understand that it's a total. Here. Yeah. So this is click on this one. Edit. And uh, this is a total column and this is the aggregate. So pretty much uh, that, that is the like you know that is a very important concept for that, you know. And uh, so so basic reports are like you know drill downs and uh, like all those things. When you click on something, it has to go somewhere, it has to do something, it list and uh, like all these aggregation functions, computed column functions, getting the constant value from table, you know, like we got the constant value from table and stuff like that. So, you know, other than that, the others are like not really very important, you know, uh, fixed grid, uh, data grid, and image grid, just you will get an image from our uh, C drive, that's all. Uh, text value, that and all is not uh, important. Single value is important, we did that. And the map and all, I believe we like that also is not uh, that it's not that important actually. Okay, so I have discussed about the most important part because based on that, like you know. But if always even if I get stuck, also I, I share this document with you guys, so you can always go there and uh, like you know, if I'm in a real point scenario, I'm saying I mean you, you can you can go here and refer to it and uh, like you know find it and then like do a trial and error process. So that's how it works basically. So when you do a trial and error process, you will find out sometimes it might not work, sometimes it will work, but uh, you can go to the manual or like ask around with colleagues or you know, when you get uh, stuck technically. So that is pretty much, uh, you know, so that it takes care of like the, um, what is that, uh, the presenter reports basically. So the present reports are very important basically. And uh, we definitely, uh, I mean, the web form stuff. I'm, I'm trying to get a web form in here. Okay, so I, I for the web form to come here, I need to create a JavaScript. You know, uh, maybe everybody is aware of JavaScript basically. So we need to have a JavaScript code in that uh, 
the form so i'm just trying to get that here so that's my issue here so i'm trying to get that so once i get it i can like you know maybe show you guys on how to do that okay however uh, i mean based on like whatever we discussed we pretty much discussed about most of these things most of the things we discussed actually you know yeah, anyway like in a couple of uh, days we should be able to like kind of uh, you know uh, we talked about transformations we talked about something transformation management document you know and there is something called the history tracking also so like whenever you know a table see for example there is some so i'll show you history tracking okay so let's say you have this here you have this table here to geography so if you click on this it will show history okay so it 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 will show like this who did that admin did some change so let's say if i do some change to this table so let's say i make the value as uh, for example 155 155 so let's do that when i click on this when i click on the history it will show the admin made a change from 100 to 155 that is the history it's keeping track of history however if you go here admin manage history tracking what is the table tables with history tracking disabled okay no 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 we have to do something else here um add history oh shit what happened oh my god Sometimes it will give that error. Uh, okay, let's try. Uh, sometimes, uh, you know. So that uh, one time you get this kind of error. So when you get uh, kicked out of the model, so when you click on it, when you try to log on again, it will give that error. So you have to use another user in that case. Okay. So, for example, I use Krishna user ID here because the admin user ID is, is, is giving you a problem. Okay, so if you can see here, I log on as Krishna here. So, here also I am admin here. Okay, so what I am going to do is I will click here. I will add this trick. Oh man, for some reason. This one maybe it's not installed probably properly or something. It is not. Uh, it's not open yet. Okay. Yeah, so it's going to do that for a while, uh, maybe for a couple of uh, like five minutes at least, you know, because it is uh, the history thing somehow it's not working. I installed it, um, maybe it's uh, giving an error. So, so basically, like you can fudge the history like that for a specific table. You know, it, it works actually. It works. So, so basically, what I'm uh, saying is so. I don't like what is there in this guide, but in the 8.1.0 version, you can fudge the history, basically. So, like fudge the history for a specific table. So, when I say fudge the history for a specific table, what it meant is, basically, you can, uh, like, if you fudge the history, it won't show the previous changes. Like, whoever did the change, it will be fudged. So, you change from 100 to 150, 150 only, it will show. 100 who changed, when they changed, it won't show. So that is the thing. So now we can log on here. See, it will take some time to log on. However, uh, we are not able to fudge that. So it's kind of uh, maybe it's not installed properly or something. However, we can try another question. So what is, what is the use of that, Krishna? Uh, what is Yeah, so uh, one use is like uh, if you have this, uh, so, so let's say if you, I mean one real-time scenario is if you are providing the data to some outside vendors or something like that. 
let's say if you are providing this model to outside vendors, you might not want uh, and you are masking some data basically. So we have real time short of security numbers, everything in the model. Okay, but uh, some outside vendor wants the model, where he wants to do some testing. So what we did was we masked the short of security number to the real time ones to one, two, three, four, five, something like that. However, if somebody clicks on one, two, three, four, five, right click and then do a history, he will see the history of a real strong security number. So that we don't want to kind of share it to outside vendor. So in that case, if you park the history, okay, and all the world values will be gone. And then you can provide the model to them. And then you can say, this is the model and they'll have only duplicate things. So that is the main uh, thing basically. So, you know, oh man, my history is all messed up, man. Okay, so that's, you got the point, right? Now? Hello? Excuse me, excuse me. Yeah, yeah, okay. So that is the one real time scenario that uh, you might run into. But however, uh, for some reason, uh, maybe it's not, I think it's installed properly, I don't know. That feature is not working. Okay, so. So for, the, for the some reason the feature is not working. Okay. However, uh, like basically if some interviewer asks question, that's what we need to answer. I mean it won't be like a, that a UI part is just right click and delete this to that's all it is. It won't be a much of a thing. Okay. So yeah, pretty much I believe we talked about it. I mean like uh, for the web forms if you take a couple of course uh, classes. I think we should be good. So I'll take, uh, I'm planning to take tomorrow is like Thursday, right? Yeah, I will take uh, 15th and then uh, maybe uh, like uh, probably 17th or something like that, you know? So with that, we should be able to complete the kind of, uh, you know, we should be able to complete the course. So, yeah, so far, uh, you know, like, uh, Anybody has any questions? Uh, uh, Krishna, uh, one doubt here in the presenter report. Is there a possibility to give a link in the presenter report for the users uh, uh, to get into another presenter report from the navigation from one presenter report to another presenter report? Uh, but we already given, right? So this one, we see this is the one actually. Oh, it's not there. However, if you go to the all payouts, we already gave, right? I did not be report all payouts. We go here. Oh, uh, this is the one that I did. I think we already shown actually. Um, maybe I change that. But if you go here, you can come here. You can select a column that you want to give the link for. Right click, select column. Right click, set link and then give it to some uh, presenter report. For example, give it to uh, uh, hmm, report geography. Yeah, let's give it to report geography. Next, finish, save. Okay, go to the right flight. Pick something. And then if you click on it, then you'll be able to go to the next report. Okay. Yeah. So that is the present the report link. And uh, you can also give external links here. Just for fun, you can do that. You can click on here. You can click here. Right click. Select column. Okay. I believe it will work. Uh, sometimes we need to use this. Just try that link. Yeah, see, it's going to Google. So like that you can play around. So that also you can do. If you click next, it will go back to the report. 
Yeah, so yeah, I believe we covered a pretty good uh, part of uh, presentation notes. So yeah, and then web forms also we discuss once. I mean, whoever knows the uh, JavaScript, there will be a good advantage, you know, because I personally don't know much about JavaScript. So JavaScript also will be a lot uh, helpful for me guys. Okay. Yeah, all right. So yeah, so we will uh, like we don't if nobody has any questions, we'll continue the session like tomorrow sometime. Okay. So we have a session tomorrow, or we have to tomorrow, Krishna? Yeah. So probably tomorrow is Thursday, so probably I'll just uh, schedule one tomorrow. You know? Yeah. So I'll schedule one tomorrow, and I will let you know before we even uh, before we even schedule because if I uh, I need to get the form data from somewhere. If I if I don't get it, then uh, you know I will let you know because uh, we need okay. to discuss the web forms only. So yeah, so based on that, uh, we can. Uh, okay, guys. Okay. Yeah, thanks, Krishna. Yeah, thank you all for joining today. Thank you all. Thank you. Have a good day. Yeah, thank you all. Thank you.